federal government and the academic staff union of universities where it was reported that on wednesday yesterday they ended their closed door meeting with an agreement that all contentious issues will be amicably resolved to avert the strike. The parties also agreed to kickstart a communication process to avert the planned industrial actions by the union. And the parties had entered into a closed door meeting with, which began at about 4.30 p.m. at the ministry's headquarters in Abuja. The meeting, which lasted for over two hours, had in attendance the two ministers overseeing education, Tahir Maman and Yusuf Sununu, and other top officials in the ministry in the federal government's team. Now, ASU President Professor Emmanuel Sodeke, who led the union's team, told journalists after the meeting that the negotiation process had begun, while hoping that the federal government would follow up on what had been agreed on. Okay, so in case you were one of those Nigerians who are really eager while watching when I told you that ASU and the federal government have finally come to an agreement, you were eager to find out what that agreement <laughs> was. Well, this is the agreement. They have said that all the matters and all the issues that ASU have put on the table will be addressed so that we don't have another nationwide strike. I, I saw in the news yesterday, it was the UUB, that's the University of Uyo branch of ASU, also said they were going to go on strike. University of Port Harcourt, they had a peaceful match the other day concerning intending strike. Uni Abuja on strike and other universities, it seems ASU as a whole now, they want to go on a strike. But but let's, as you, let's hope that this meeting would actually avert that strike. But what do you see this meeting coming up with? This is not the first time that we have had ASU and the federal government come to an agreement. Well, uh, dialogue is a process and is the best conventional means of uh, resolving issues. So also yielding to uh, her employer, like I said the last time that uh, the ASO members must also realize that their opinion can never be supreme to her employer, which is the government. And also thanking the Ministry of uh, Education for uh, waking up to her responsibilities instead of relying on other arms of government to intervene. It shows that uh, they were uh, relatively not alive to her responsibilities. And I also want to thank also for towing the path of continual dialogue because that is the best you know, option for achieving whatever uh, ideas or uh, uh, project you want to achieve. Again, uh, they have mentioned to us that the federal government have agreed to look into. Now, uh, it's a wisdom statement because, like I always say, all that ASO is requesting for may not be 100% be implemented by the government. It has to be realistic. It mm -hmm. has to be uh, 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 possibly working out. Now, the demand of ASO some years back and now cannot be the same. So, government response over the years or Funny over the... Funny enough, it's, it's almost around the same thing. ASO keeps going over the same thing. Uh, so, that's the point we are saying. So, I want to believe that part of the discussion, which is our own advocacy, it should be majored more on our academic content. And then once that is taken care of, the welfare of ASU, the welfare of the university system should be given the uttermost uh, attention. But that's after? After ensuring that the, our academic content is now problem, you know, solving driven, is now going to be resourceful, is now going to be beyond lecturing rather than training then ASO are good because we can now reliably believe that they are going to uh, become, a, you know, the uh, producers of uh, government or the public or Nigerian economic resource persons mm. that we help aid our dying or weakening economy. So we rely so much on ASO because, like we always know that 
the education is the strength of any nation. So the graduate you turn out is the hope of any nation. So that's why we are very much interested in the academic content. That's why we are very much interested in what is happening between the government, the employer, and the employee also. Okay. So I think once this is uh, achieved, we'll have that we'll issue. Have so, a, but you've been talking about the academic content, and from conversations that we have had, and your stance on the ASU and federal government, should I call it a buha now, mm -hmm. <laughs> dialogue or conflict for some time now, what, what would you have to say about um, University of Potaka's ASU branch now? They, ha they said that uh, for 30 to 40 months, they haven't been paid their pro promotional um, salaries. So you're promoted to the position of a professor, and then you are not being paid in that regard for 30 to 40 months now. Were you, were you actually the guest we had yes, the other well, day we talked about this? Not really. Okay. Well, uh, relatively. So how would they be thinking of um, cont solving the content first, the educational, the content of our curriculum first, before actually solving the matters of the stomach? No, you see, they are not being denied their basic salary. The promotional payment and the promotion that is being done is an appreciation to their services, which is wonderful. Now. I'm not saying a holding brief for government. Why have these processes so much uh, been delayed? Most of the times, you understand with me, because of our bureaucratic nature of what we intend achieving, it slopes the execution of government policies. For 30 to 40 months. Yes, and most times, uh, uh, relatively, it could be politicized. You know, so until our system becomes very fair and very uh, uh, justifiable, most of these processes that are being delayed, uh, the bureaucracy in our system ought not to delay most of this kind of uh, uh, arrangement. But again, mm. I've also, I know that we have bad leaders uh, to a reasonable extent. When promotions are being made, the, I'm sure that ASU is not the only uh, arms of government that promotions are made and then the uh, salary, what goes with that promotion has not been done. Now, you realize that we are already going through economic uh, challenges as a nation and I also will want to assume probably that the federal government do not have that resources yet. It's like a budget. When a budget is being passed, it doesn't mean it will be executed that way. It will be only realizable when the funding is there. So sometimes you, they can put in the budget, we're going to construct uh, uh, 50,000 uh, whatever classroom in Uniport, for instance. And then the government do not have the resources to fund it. So it will now be assumed that ah, government said they will build this thing this year. Why have they not done it? Right. It seems somebody has uh, stolen okay. the money. So right. funding is different from so budget. So you actually believe that it could be a case of the funds not being available. That's why lecturers have not Possibly. Been Dr. John. That's not true. See, some time ago we suggested that, you know, Nigeria from, for the past trend, for, for, for the past 20 years or so, have been in the system. It does appear that government does not really need education in Nigeria. So we, at a point, we suggested that we shut down all the universities, then uh, plan. If it is one year, let us go back to the drawing board and plan to find out if we actually need university education. Now, UNESCO, for instance, suggested that the funding of education for developing nations should be at the minimum is 15% of the budget. Now, the current, I am not, if I go back, it will, it's a sad tale. Now, the 2024 budget has about 27.5 trillion, and only one point uh, something trillion was allocated to education. And that, you know, amounts to about 6.2 percent, 6.2, 6 6.3 uh, percent, which is far below the UNESCO recommended threshold. But education is not the only sector that has a low, low funding listen, in the budget. Li listen, li listen, I'm a university lecturer. See, 
Edu do you know why they take education as a public good at the basic level? Because without education, number one, you cannot even read and write. Without education, most of other services you perform cannot be performed. If you are a nurse, if, even if you are a truck pusher and they say don't urinate, or this is, or you are a driver and there is a, a road sign that this road, this is road closed and so on. So education is not just an industry of its own. Education is something that empowers, enables other sectors of the economy. Now today, Nigeria is facing a dire situation. Brain drain continues to occur and nothing can stop that. There is demotivation of, of the workforce. And that is why every little thing you talk about, in verses, oh, this, when you say ASU continues to bring up the same matters time and again, mm. it is because the federal government has refused to address these matters. I'm talking about, sometimes we talk about the uh, 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 agreements that were reached about 20 years ago. Mm. The federal government has not implemented them. If you look at the way education is funded, even in landlocked countries like Gaborone, that is uh, Botswana, Ghana, and so on, you will weep for this country. So you have brain drain going on. You have, uh, because of poor, poor funding of our university system, you see decay in infrastructure. The quality of education has been watered down. Nigeria, which used to be the education laboratory of Africa, has been relegated to the background. Nigeria has lost that competitive edge we used to have in education. I told you the other day that when UI was a, a, a university college in Badon, eh, affiliated to the University of London and so on, Pakistanis, Indians, other Asian countries, even Europeans, we are coming to Nigeria to acquire education. That um, The quality of our educational system was you know, comparable to that obtainable in London and so on. So, much as it, it, they have just, the federal government has made similar statements in the past. Way so you back don't see this one being different? Uh, no, I am not. I am up to be on the side of optimism. Eh? I believe that government will do something. But they have made several promises like that in the past. Oh, we are going to see to it that all your problems will be solved and so on. Let us look at the outcome. Let us see how the federal government will muster up the political will to be able to address these issues. When um, Ambassador Key stated that the, probably the reason why the professors have not been paid their new salaries for 30 to 40 months could be because of the economic situation and maybe because we do not have the funds, the government does not have the funds to actually settle that. And that is not, according to him, that might not really be the only sector where there have been promotions and people have not been paid. And your statement your response to that was, it's a lie. So I'm, I am still waiting for you to give me reasons why you actually a country, say it is not a, that. This is a country, case. this budget, eh, so much is allocated to defense, so much is allocated to other sectors. Eh? And uh, this, you see, we, we, I think we, we have been in an anti-intellectual anti uh, uh, administration for too long. If uh, the best we have allocated to education was during the time of IBB and uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan, when uh, the government was able to allocate about 12% of the total budget to the education sector. Our problem with Nigeria is not about whether there is fund or not. We have enough money. Our problem is this money is being mismanaged by a, a group of people. You know, rent seekers. Impaired builders are the people at the helm of affairs. And these, are these people, knowing that if they give preference to education, if they prioritize education, university education, it will come to a point where education is the only thing that can bridge when you are in the classroom. I was in the classroom. I, I made, a, in, my, during my, in 1992, I made the best result in my class. Eh? I was a poor boy. Sometimes even to take a, a cigarette to drink was a problem. But education leveled us. Yes, those from the rich families and those of us from the poor families, we were leveled. And by the end of the day, some people from even poorer families, we are doing better than... If we look at the budget um, allocation for health, it is, also really, it is also very low and it's below standard. So education is not really... You can imagine, you can, now know, uh, you can now know why our doctors, nurses and so on are going to... They are living in droves mm. to Canada... To Australia, to America, 
to the United Kingdom. We are using our hands to kill this system. Now, the education of some of these doctors and so on was education that was subsidized with Nigeria's money. So Niger tr through this brain drain uh, syndrome, Nigeria is not just losing manpower. We are also losing the money we have invested. So if uh, we are part of the government, the federal government and so on, sectors like health, education, you don't joke with them. Even in, the, uh, in Great Britain, when nurses and uh, doctors go on strike, go, it is an emergency. But here, I don't think uh, government is serious. So what... Uh, the, the, the final word I want to say is that government has made a promise. We are going to look into all your problems. problems. That is just a political statement. That's what you you will see, in the next one or two years, these same issues we are discussing will be discussed again. So government is not... But they, my submission is that the federal government is not serious about providing education. And that is why, to a great extent, the private universities today are flourishing. Why? Because people have lost confidence in, the, in, in our public universities.